How do you describe yourself? What is your narrative? What is the story that you tell yourself about who you are and then the story that you tell others? Sometimes they're not totally aligned. I want to talk to you today about how to turn your inner story into a powerful tool for understanding yourself and also for changing and challenging some of the stereotypes that we face as older women. My name is Margaret Manning with 60 and Me, and I want to thank you so much for being here today. It's wonderful to have you on this journey with me, and um, the things we talk about here are things that you have said are important to you, and I'm really happy to share this one. I think the inner dialogue that we have with ourselves is so important. The show today is brought to you by Easy Spirit. Now, Easy Spirit is a shoe company that's been making comfortable and very fashionable shoes for years, and they've updated their product line. They've got lots of beautiful new boots and shoes, athletic shoes, in all sizes and and widths, and I encourage you to take a look at their website, easyspirit.com. And if you look at the description in the uh, article here under the video, you'll see a promo code for a a 20% discount off of a, a purchase of Easy Spirit shoes. So thanks to Easy Spirit. All right, so now this inner dialogue, this dialogue that we talk to ourselves about is is so important. I think it it generates so much response in the world around us that we may not realize. If if people ask you you to describe yourself, what would be the three or four words that you would use? So actually a really good exercise to even do that and then to ask a friend to say, how would you describe me? And see whether their... Uh, interpretation or their their words are anywhere close to what you said. It's it's a very um, a good exercise. But I think our lens on the world and the place that we have in the world really do affect the inner story that changes everything about the way we act, the way that we live our lives, you know, where we travel, where we uh, where we work, how we work. And so if we start saying things to ourselves like, "Well, I'm too old to." do something, or I'm not important anymore. I don't have any relevance anymore in the workplace, for example, or I'm not beautiful anymore. I don't have the same beauty that I had when I was younger. All these things actually are kind of like self-fulfilling prophecies. You know, I am whatever is, you know, a product of what you're thinking. So if you have some medical issues, for example, you have some mobility issues, you can very easily say, I am that disease. I am, I am that disability that I have. And it doesn't have to be a physical one. It could be something that uh, has happened to you that has, you know, sort of set you uh, on, on a path of thinking about yourself. I'm not smart enough. I'm not, you know, young enough. I'm not... S- Uh, rich enough, all these things that we say to ourselves, you know, they then control the way we act. I think it's so important. And your brain follows these thoughts and it makes them come true. So when you tell your story to yourself, it's important that you balance it with this kind of reality um, that's positive. And so instead of saying, you know, I am too whatever, I don't know enough about technology, you say, well, I'm going to learn. I'm going to learn how to, you know, use the, the basics of technology. Or if um, or I'm too, I'm too old. Well, push yourself a little. Surprise yourself with what's possible. And I think that one of the things that we here at Sixty and Me we talk about a lot is sharing with others. I mean, friendship and being able to connect with other people in this sort of like-minded way is super important to us. And we actually feel that uh, you know the Sixty and Me community is quite large. So we've j- just mentioned that we've got a couple of places that you can go if you want to share your story with a smaller group of people. I think it's important that I mention this because you know if we were just talking about the <clears throat> the reality of uh, having an inner dialogue that shapes a, a, a world that you don't necessarily like, you've got to have something to do about it. So one option, we have a Patreon group, which is called patreon.com slash 60andMe, P-A-T-R-E-O-N. And it's a site where you can join about 800 women now in a smaller group. It's a private group. Uh, It's not on the Facebook platform. You just go in, uh, you have a private um, uh, community. And we talk about all kinds of things, you know, that are more personal. We have fun. (laughs) We chat about each other, where we live. People have connected that way as well. They've made 
friends on the Patreon platform. It's a platform there where you can support 60 and Me. There's a small donation, I think $3 a month or whatever you can afford to help us with our mission. It's really useful for us to be able to offer that. And then also on Facebook, we have a supporters group there. So we have a live show every month. We have um, exclusive videos that I record just for that smaller group. And the reason I mention it in this context is that if you are trying to turn your inner story into a reality that is happier, more joyful, more meaningful in your 60s, 70s, 80s, beyond, you need friends. And you need people who can help you to fill that gap and, and can remind you of the things that you're maybe exaggerating or focusing on that are just not true or not helpful. They can help you get a reality and they can say, well, I went through that too and this is what I did. And it's that sense of uh, being on the journey together. And finding ways to engage with others is probably one of the most important things that you can do as you get older because isolation leads to depression, leads to social anxiety. But if you can find people you can chat with, it really does help. And your narrative then, your story becomes your reality. Other people's um, re um, feelings can actually influence too, us too. So if we're sensitive to stereotypes and people are saying, well, maybe they actually treat you differently when you say you're 70 years old. It's like, oh, well, you don't want to be doing anything that's too dangerous or too whatever. That public narrative about aging is pervasive. It's everywhere. And it's so powerful. It's in media. It's in, um, you know, in television, newspapers. It's just telling you that when you get to a certain age, your story has to change. And it does not. Um, it's, you know, as we get older, we theoretically, and probably in most cases, don't care so much about other people's opinions. But there is this subtlety about how you're treated, which changes your inner voice to, I'm too old. I'm not good enough. I'm not you know, I'm not healthy enough, I'm not well well enough, all these things to, that then kind of are self-fulfilling, the self-fulfilling prophecies. So how do you establish a positive narrative? Well, you start, you start with self-awareness. You start with yourself. You start looking at yourself. And some of our cards actually in our, our deck of cards are helpful for this because they help you to go deeper with the emotions that you're feeling about yourself. And uh, in, the, in doing that, having that self-awareness, you can, yeah, you can recognize your flaws. Um, I mean, I even find myself sometimes making excuses like, well, I can't do that because, you know, I'm now this age. And then I have to stop myself and say that it's just encouraging a dialogue that makes other people more, you know, aware that I'm sensitive about it. So what are you saying about yourself? How are you describing yourself? Are you saying you're too old? You're too, you're not beautiful enough? You're not smart enough. Are you saying those things? Are your thoughts positive or negative? Because if, if, you can, if, you, if you can change your thoughts, you can change the inner story and your reality will, will, will shift with it. We're all aging every day, right? There's nothing we can do about it. It's, a, you know, it's something that we have to now live with. It's, and if we have a positive mindset on it, it will, it will honestly allow you to push beyond what you think is possible. And if you think that you, I mean, I've had so many people come and say, oh, Margaret, I'm not very technically savvy. You, you, you set that up in your mind to believe it. It's not that complicated to, to learn how to use some of the tools that you know, at 60 and Me we, we value, like here on YouTube while well, you're here. And if you're watching this, you're hopefully appreciating it. But then there's other channels that are website and Facebook. You, you know, you can do um, courses online now to get up to speed on all these things. You don't have to feel that you're living a story that is an old story. Create your new story. This is what it's all about. And being 60, 70, 80, these are the times. And even 50s. I mean, we've got women in our community who are 50 and so appreciating this lens because, um, you know, the ageism issues start much younger than 60, especially in the United States. And well, it's all around the world. But just know that it's time to write a new chapter in a new language, new words, new inner story, your new narrative. So what is your narrative? Do you have a positive or a negative thought about yourself? Do you describe yourself in, describe yourself in ways that you'd like to change? Tell us about what you're experiencing. I think we could all learn from it. It'd be very, very valuable. I appreciate you being here. I thank you for your support. And also just please uh, leave us some comments here. We want to know, uh, maybe describe yourself. How would you describe yourself in three words? And then check with a friend to see if that's what they think. 
Have a really great day, everybody. Have a, have a wonderful day wherever you are. Change that dialogue to a more positive outlook and the world will change with it. And uh, we look forward to, to talking to you again very soon. Bye-bye for now.